And tonight, sports teams across the world, from Japan to Italy, are playing in front of empty stadiums amid coronavirus fears, and major sports leagues in the U.S. are responding with new measures. The baseball, hockey, soccer, and basketball leagues are banning reporters from going into locker rooms. Only players are allowed in the clubhouses, in locker room, and essential personnel. Everyone else not allowed in. That's how it started. In a time when no person thought sports could just end, league commissioners from around the world tried their hardest to save what was left of their season. But it was too late. Some very sobering news. The NBA has decided to suspend game play following the conclusion of tonight's game. This astounding and unprecedented story continues to evolve. The NBA is suspending the season. It's around the world suspending their seasons in the wake of the coronavirus. The Masters announced it is postponing this year's event. We also learned the Boston Marathon, which had been scheduled for April 20th, that would be postponed into September. Overnight, the XFL, which Vince McMahon just launched this year, canceling the rest of its entire season. We were just halfway into the regular season. Brand new week, so For the first time since World War II, there are no sports being played in America. No college, no high school, no peewee, nothing. No sports anywhere. We don't really have a choice. Storylines that fans have been following all season have been put on pause, but now they're looking for new ones. Journalists and broadcasters alike have been given their biggest challenge yet, serving their largest audience entertaining content with no new content to work with. There's so many things that have happened before that we can sort of use as a template, but this is something that's so unprecedented that it's really forced us to kind of be creative in, in how we cover it and also get in touch with what our readers are looking for so that when we are trying to find things that, you know, to give them that are sports related, like what, what kind of things they like. In the month and a half than the last time that professional sports have been played, the consensus is that sports fans are still hungry for content. The Global Web Index reported that 60 to 70 percent of consumers in the UK and US say they've used at least one channel to get information on sports news, whether that's social media, television, gaming, or any other media. The special coronavirus report stated that there is a notably higher interest in sports news than we would expect when compared to before the outbreak. What we found just at the globe is that our sports stories have definitely you know it's going to be hard for us to have a story that's more popular than all of this breaking news especially in the beginning like there was just so much to keep track of and our readers were really relying on us for that but what we're finding is that sports stories are really deeply read they're being read for a long time people are reading from top to bottom which uh is a disappointing fact that according to our analytics that it's pretty much not the case for that that a lot of news organizations uh every newspaper i've worked at um you know you'd be surprised at how long the engagement time is on a story it's just it's there's not enough people aren't reading the whole thing through but we're realizing that people are really interested in doing that now or when has the boston globe decided when is like kind of enough to talk about corona regarding this and just like stick to sports in itself i had originally that personally thought that we were kind of going to get over the wave of news. Everything was going to be canceled. There wasn't going to be any games and that we would very kind of very quickly jump into like the, the other stuff. And so we started generating ideas about, you know, lists, best of teams, looking back, where are they now? You know, um, like some bigger pieces that we probably we know people will like what we wouldn't have time to do in the middle of the season. Like, you know, some of those other things um, about like, I'm trying to think of a good word to describe them. Like the type of stories that kind of take you behind the scenes, right? Like 
I am so curious about like what all these people do in the front office and like these are the kinds of things we're like, okay, we'll have time now because they'll be able to talk with us because what else are they doing, right? According to that Global Web Index report, 18% of sports consumers would like to see that exclusive content, 17% would like to see old content such as archives and reruns, and another 17% want live interaction with fans. And this is exactly what fans are getting to see. Regional networks have been allowing fans the opportunity to relive the most exciting times in their team's history. New England Sports Network just aired the entire 2011 Bruins Stanley Cup playoff run, culminating in a Zoom call with most of the players from that team to talk about moments from the game. I think Nesson is uh, starting to take a much harder turn toward digital, which I think is wildly important, especially with, I mean, Nesson was never in print and they would never succeed in print, but with a lot of print publications starting to fold and go on toward online, um, and a lot of the ad revenue is is really starting to gear more toward our um, online content as well. So I think that is going to be a big player for us uh, becoming a, a stronger department. With almost 80 years in between the two droughts in sports, they have taught fans and the rest of society different lessons with the same outcome. Both of these droughts have brought us closer together in ways that we never saw coming. Although these people are further away from each other than ever, it is sports that continue to make them feel like they are not alone. With the new power of media, connectivity has never shone brighter than it does during this crisis.